All right. All right. So this month we are talking about National Nutrition Month. So every March is considered National Nutrition Month. So um, they always choose a theme every year. Um, and this theme is personalize your plate. Um, those who don't know me, my name is Hannah Padgett. I'm a registered dietitian. And this is class three of the nutrition series at Rural Health Network. So this year, like I said, they want to focus on personalizing your plate. Um, so they want to decide that nutrition is not a one-size-fits-all approach, uh, that we are all unique and come from different backgrounds and different goals, different bodies, and different tastes. Um, and we want to work on creating a healthy eating plan that is just as special as you are. Okay. Um, so they really wanted to highlight for this this year is meal planning and shopping and how to enjoy eating healthy outside of the home and not just at home. Um, cooking and preparing food, so learning how to make healthy tasty meals. Um, having a lot of variety in your diet, rotating foods and trying to fit new foods into your diet as often as possible. And then also working with a professional when it's needed. Um, so this is a great first step coming to these classes or watching these on YouTube is, is a great first step. Okay, so first we're going to talk about the meal planning and grocery shopping. So here's some tips when it comes to this, um, especially when you're grocery shopping, it's a really good idea to start with a list. So writing everything down before you go to the store can really help um, prevent buying things you don't need to buy and obviously it can reduce costs in the long run. Um, it can also, so during when you're grocery shopping, it's really smart to choose store name brands. So when you are choosing the store brands, it's usually getting um, a better deal. It's usually the same product as the other uh, more brands that you do know. So always check to see if they have a store brand of, you know, anything that you're buying. Check on the sales before you go. Um, Publix specifically has a really great app. If you just search Publix in the App Store, and you can download that app, and it shows you all the sales. So you can always check on it before you go, and you can even make a virtual shopping list um, on this app. That can be really helpful. And when Dixie has one as well, the two main grocery stores we have for these have both of these apps, and I highly, highly recommend downloading them and checking them out when you can. Um, buying fresh produce season that could really help again with budget. And also that the fruit and vegetables are going to taste better if you do buy them in season. Um, consider buying frozen or canned fruit and vegetables when it's not seasoned because it's, they're not going to be as good um, fresh as they probably are going to be in canned and frozen because it's picked at the peak of the season and frozen or canned at that time. So and another really important tip I always try to tell people is try not to go shopping hungry. That can also lead to buying unnecessary things, snacks, you know, you're hungry. So anything you see that looks good, you might be purchasing. And it might not be the best thing that you should be purchasing, I think. Hey, Elizabeth, do you have a lot of noise going on there? I, I do a lot of noise. Yeah, I don't know. Hold on. Okay. It's a lot of, like, crackling and, like, some whistling. Let's see if it goes off in just a second. Okay. Hold on. Did it go away? It's a little bit better, yeah. The whistling, okay. yeah. Okay, cool. Must have been the air. Okay. Another thing to really uh, become familiar with when you're meal planning and shopping is to start looking at the nutrition labels. Uh, I mentioned the previous class. Do you hear that? Okay. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I hear it come through my speaker, which is okay. weird. Like, so I don't know if it's slight noise. Like, when you're not moving, I don't hear it. Okay. Like, it's not doing it right now, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, no, it's good right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, in the previous class, we talked about the new, new nutrition label a little bit. So, I wanted to kind of dive a little bit deeper into that. Um, this new label is already rolling out, and it's going to be completely rolled out by the middle of this year. 
Um, this label is really nice because it makes it easier for us to make better eating choices. It's really made uh, the font bigger on the calories, on the servings per container, and on the serving size. So you can really, really see uh, what's in the food that you're, you're purchasing. It also tells us now how much vitamin D, how much calcium, how much iron, and how much potassium are in the food products. Before it was just a percentage for daily value, and now it actually tells you the specific amount of those nutrients, which is really great. So here's a, a up close and person look at the old nutrition label versus the new one on the left, um, or maybe on your right. It shows, you know, the first one, you can see how the calories are really kind of hard to see. The serving size is hard to see. And then at the bottom, you also see how the vitamin D, calcium, iron, and potassium are all listed there in their, in their respected uh, amounts. Um, so that's a really more appealing label. You can really see what you're getting. Um, so it's a great change that they're making. So we're hoping by this new um, nutrition label that they've rolled out that people can make better choices when it comes to choosing the foods. Um, the so again, becoming familiar with this new nutrition label, check out the first store when you come, and you know, comparing it to Take a look for products that are going to be lowest in saturated fats, less in terms of Again, we want to avoid those trans fats and then also watch out for the sodium in the products. We want to choose one, you know, make sure we want to get under that 2,300 milligrams per day. So when it comes to products, you want to be searching for you know, 500 milligrams per serving. When it comes to um, another thing they added with this new nutrition label is they've now put on the added sugars it contains in the product. So you can also look out for choosing a product is you want to find one that's going to be lowest in the added sugar because we really want that added sugar to be less than about 10% of total calories. The other thing you want to compare is you want to find foods with fiber and protein. So again, those are all found on the nutrition label. So again, comparing the two can really help choose the better product. Okay, so other um, tips, especially for planning meals when you go out. Um, or sorry, meal planning, planning your meals for the week. Um, planning your meals for the day of the week is going to help us meet some healthy eating goals. Uh, but this can be overwhelming for some people to plan out, you know, a whole week or, you know, anything they're going to be eating that week. So you could just start, you know, by planning out maybe one day at a time. You can do this the night before or even the morning of if you have some time. And you can there anything you that makes your day easier. So if you have a couple, you know, maybe about 30 minutes in the morning, you can chop up some vegetables during the time that you're going to be having for lunch or dinner. Maybe you can marinate some meat during that time. Uh, something that you can do ahead of time to prepare for, let's say, that day or the next couple days can be really helpful, whatever we have time. When you are planning meals, you really want to make sure you're including all these good food groups. So fruits, vegetables, whole grains, meats. If you do, do finally plan out your meals and write things down, look over and see if you're missing any of these crucial items. Like maybe you're, you know, you're not getting any vegetables on a couple days, so go back and add in the vegetables, that kind of thing. These are the foods that you want to focus on. Um, but you do also want to allow yourself to eat foods that um, are on that eat less list that we talked about before. So we don't want to re fully restrict anything, but we definitely want to include the whole, you know, better foods most of the time. Um, some people that do enjoy meal prepping usually do about three to four days at a time. We don't usually recommend going over four days. Um, food is usually not that great after day four, so I would usually recommend between three to four days of prepping at a time. Um, and then find a day where you really can take a couple hours to prepare the food. Uh, a lot of people could do this on Sunday, or if they work during the weekend, they can do it in the week. So whatever you can find the time to you know, just prepare this food that you can have for the next couple days. You can also portion them out, put them in little Tupperwares, have them ready to go. So the next few days are pretty much set. What's really nice about prepping for three to four days too is you just, you cook and clean once, which is really nice. So um, I would highly recommend, you know, giving us a shot. Like I said, maybe just starting out prepping for one day and slowly going up from there and just seeing what, you know, how much you can handle and what your time looks like. Another thing that's really good is to have a stash of healthy snacks that can be easily taken with you if you need to go somewhere. Um, I love hard-boiled eggs, portable fruit like, like apples or bananas. 
cheese sticks are really great to just grab and go and protein bars and shakes are good too again if you are going to be doing that protein bar or any kind of bars just look at the nutrition label and find one again that's going to be the highest in that protein the highest in that fiber um always going to be good um raw veggies are also a good thing to grab and go like carrot sticks you know cucumbers broccoli raw vegetables anything you can grab there is easy too try to limit things like chips pretzels high sugar snacks those things add up really, really quickly when it comes to calories, fats, sodium, that kind of thing. So those you should limit and do less often. <clears throat> Again, go for snacks higher in that protein fiber because those two nutrients really help us keep full and satisfied. Um, there are so many great videos online that show you how to meal prep. Um, there's some really simple ones. I actually found one that I wanna show at the end of this presentation if we have time. Um, she really just takes you through some really simple meal prep ideas, and there's so many great videos out there to watch. So I highly recommend just doing a Google search, you know, some meal prepping. There's so many great things you can watch to get some good ideas from. Okay, so cooking and preparing foods, another one they wanted to focus on for National Nutrition Month. Um, so try it, like I said, try and prepare cooked food more at home if possible. This really allows us to be in control of what we are eating, what your family is eating. It lets you get creative with your cooking and also budget friendly because it's a lot cheaper to buy foods at the grocery store than it is to go out to eat all the time. So here's just some tips for getting started with cooking and preparing food. Like I said before, get inspired. Look up some uh, informational videos. Check out blogs, social media accounts. There's so much great information out there that can really help you get started with cooking and preparing foods at home. There's videos to show you how to chop things, how to how to store things. It's, there's so much great information out there. When you are cooking, add color. So when you add color, what does that mean? Adding fruits and vegetables. Um, so that can really make the meal more appealing. It looks good. And also it's going to be healthier for us because that's where a lot of your vitamins and minerals are coming from. Really try to replace salt with other herbs and spices. There's so many herbs. There's so many spices out there. Really get creative with trying some new things. Your fats. So use healthier oils when it comes to cooking. Um, my favorite high heat oil is going to be that avocado oil. Um, and then Olive oil is a great one for low low heat cooking and also raw. Perfect for raw for making dressing, things like that. Give your pantry a makeover. You know, look at what's in your pantry and again stock up the most healthier oils, get some nice vinegar, some spices maybe, and really try to you know set yourself up for some good meals in the future. <clears throat> and then again, brush up on some skills. You know, to cut up an onion. Uh, how to cook a certain fruit or vegetable that you want to try, or maybe a new meat you want to try. Again, lots of good information online. And again, relax and have fun with it. You know, get the family involved. You know, try some new meals. You know, a lot of a lot of people like cooking for therapy. You know, it's very it's very relaxing. It can be, and you can really get really creative with it. So. There's been a lot of really awesome actually cooking classes online too, especially with the pandemic. So. Um, white people are, are going towards more online teaching and, and learning stuff as well. Again, we'll do that a little bit when it comes to cooking and preparing foods. You can find a lot of really cool stuff. I did want to touch on a little bit how cooking can make a difference when it comes to the vitamin and mineral content of the food. So, different methods of food preparation can affect the vitamin content and bioavailability. So bioavailability means how well you absorb the vitamins and minerals from the food that you're eating. So it is important to know that. So water-soluble vitamins, so like vitamin C, thiamine, all the B vitamins, all these vitamins are water-soluble, and they can get lost in water if you like cook things in water. Um, so it is best to steam vegetables, saute them, air fry them, roast them, microwave them. Because um, if you boil the veggies in the water, it's going to leach out the, a lot of the, the vitamins, especially the, those water-soluble vitamins. So if you do boil the vegetables, you're going to see like the water is different colors from the veggies. So if you do do that, use the water to make soup or, or in some way you can make Tomatoes and yellow or red beans are best cooked. So um, when you cook tomatoes, it actually releases a lot of the nutrients more than if you eat it raw. Um, so I always recommend cooking the tomatoes. I mean, raw tomatoes are great too, but cooking them actually releases more of the nutri nutri nutrients in them. 
Um, when it comes to the fat soluble vitamins, so vitamin A, D, E, and K, it means fat soluble because we need fat for them to absorb properly in the body. So um, adding extra protein, olive oil to foods, avocados, nuts and seeds to salads. Another reason why we want healthy fats, every single meal that we're eating, so we can help the vitamins and minerals absorb properly. Vitamin C um, helps iron absorb. So it's, a, you know, if you squeeze lemon on your salads, that can really help. Um, so just keep that in mind if you are personally anemic or need more iron, that more iron in your body. So vitamin C helps that absorb. Um, another one I like to tell people is cr chopping or crushing garlic and letting it sit for a few minutes actually releases something called allicin, which is a super powerful disease fighting chemical. It's, it's a great one to do. So I highly recommend doing that as well when it comes to garlic. So unlike vitamins, minerals, and foods easily survive cooking and storing, so that's good. So we're more worried about the vitamins than the minerals when it comes to cooking. Here's just some smart, smart, smart substitutes that I like to tell clients. Um, one of my favorite ones when it comes to cooking and eating at home is swapping out sour cream for Greek yogurt. Um, if you haven't tried that yet, it's great. I use it for tacos. It's really awesome, that Greek yogurt. So definitely give that a try if you haven't. Again, trying to swap out those soybean or vegetable oils for a healthier or better oil, like avocado oil or the olive oil we talked about. Again, swapping out salt for other herbs and spices. Swapping out those commercial dressings you have in your fridge that have been there forever for, you know, making your own dressing with extra virgin olive oil and vinegar or another homemade dressing. There's so many great recipes out there. Definitely recommend searching for some of those. <clears throat> um, I love using salsa or just like lemon and lime for, for dressings as well. Um, you can swap out ketchup for salsa, um, oils for vinegars. Um, another really one that I love is the coconut aminos for the soy sauce. So coconut aminos are actually made from coconuts um, and it's gonna be way, way lower in sodium. So it's a great, it's a great swap. And then also just trying to swap any kind of the white grains we have for any whole wheat um, varieties as well. Um, and if you're not a big fan of the whole wheat varieties of say pasta, you can always do like half whole wheat and half white, and that can be a good transition as well. Where do you find the coconut aminos? What, where would you find those at in the store? At Publix, they have them at Publix. Okay, just like, like yeah. on um, what type of aisle would you find, like on the soy sauce aisle? Yeah, the same place where the okay. soy sauce would be there. Um, Publix is really, really good. So if you ask anyone that works there where they are, they can definitely show you where they are too. Because sometimes okay. some Publixes are weird. So I know the one up here in Isla Mirada, like they have like an international section mm -hmm. that sometimes says different things. So um, if you have a hard time finding it, definitely ask someone that works there. They're pretty good about it. Okay. And also the, the Publix app is really cool because if you do make a virtual list, it tells you exactly where the item is on what aisle. It's really cool. Okay. So cool. that can help too. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So the third point they wanted to, to discuss was adding more variety to your diet. Um, so over here on the right, I have a picture of all the produce that's in season right now for March. So earlier I talked about trying to choose Produce that's going to taste better and it's going to be at a better price point. Um, so these are all the things that are currently in season. You got avocados, you got asparagus, broccoli. The oranges and grapefruits have been awesome lately. Um, cauliflower, carrots, cabbage, all these things are in season right now. So they're all going to be a better price at this point and they're all going to taste pretty good. So um, they want to promote more a varied diet because that obviously you're going to get more vitamins and minerals and nutrients when you eat more of a variety of things. Um, so just try to include different fruits, vegetables, beans, whole grains, meats. Just try to rotate as much as possible. Um, but of course, we all want to have favorite foods. So it's I'm not saying you don't you can't you know eat the same thing every day. Like I eat the same thing a lot. You know I rotate a couple different things. Um, so it's okay to eat leftovers and eat a few things the same a couple days. Just trying to rotate a few things a week can really be helpful in meeting your nutritional goal. <clears throat> okay. And then another thing I, I know you guys have heard me talk about before is really choosing more from that eat more list and less from that eat less list, which we're going to talk about now. So 
I like to put foods in different groups. I don't like to say don't eat these and eat these. I like to do more of eat more, eat less, and then eat some. <clears throat> so the eat more group, we really should be eating these most of the time. Like 80% of the time, the foods that you eat should be coming from that eat more group. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is protein. <clears throat> so as you can see here in the bottom left corner, is where we get our protein. About a quarter of your plate should be that good protein source. Um, and most of the time, you want to be, you know, eggs, fish, shellfish, turkey, chicken, lean cuts of beef. Bison's a great lean one. Lamb. They're lean pork, like a pork chop. Some wild game. Greek yogurt's a great one. Cottage cheese. And then also tofu and tofu are in that category as well. So why do we want protein in our meals? So... <clears throat> All of our enzymes, our cell transporters, our blood transporters, our cell structure, our hair, our fingernails, our, much of our muscles, our bones, our internal organs, a lot of our hormones, all are made up of mostly protein. So it's a really, really important nutrient that we need in our body. So the standard recommendation um, is about 0 0.8 grams per kilogram. <clears throat> um, but that's fine if you eat that much. So I'm going to give you an example of what that looks like. So if you were about 150 pounds, 0 0.8 grams per kilogram would be about 55 grams of protein per day. Okay. So if you did eat that, that's okay. But if you're sitting all day, but we're not sitting all day, most of us are up and moving. We need to continue to build and repair tissue that we're breaking down all day. So we really actually need more than that in our body. <clears throat> And then if you are physically active, you're going to need more. If you're injured or sick, you actually need more protein. Um, if you have something that's you're not absorbing the protein properly, you need more. If you're pregnant or breastfeeding, you're going to need more. If you're young and growing, you're going to need more. And if you're older, you're going to need more because you're actually losing lean body mass the older that you get. So all of these, this pretty much includes everybody. We pretty much all need more protein than what the RVA is. So. That's a really good reason to focus on eating more protein and trying to get it in every meal that you're eating. Um, a lot of research has been done on those higher protein diets, uh, which has been shown to lo help lower blood pressure, improve glucose regulation, improve cholesterol, and just other indicators of heart health. So carbs and fat can actually be stored for later use, but protein can't be stored that same way. So we always need to be replenishing that protein source. So again, another reason we want to be getting it in every single meal that we're eating, okay? So just to give you an example, back to that 150 pound person, um, a better um, better amount of protein they should be eating would, would be about 100 grams of protein, compared to that 55 grams of protein. <clears throat> So the next part of this pie is going to be the carbohydrates. So the carbohydrates we want to be eating most of the time are going to be those whole minimally processed sources. So here's some of those sides, you know, beans and lentils, buckwheat's a great one, quinoa, brown and wild rice, potatoes of all variety, fresh and frozen fruit, oats is great, corn, peas, barley, yucca, and then whole grain breads, squashes, and wraps. So we want to choose more whole grain, whole food sources of carbs, um, because these carbs take longer to process in our body, and longer to break down, um, and this is going to provide us with energy, our appetite will be quicker, and you also recover faster from exercise. It's also good for our brain as well. And these whole food carbs also contain more vitamins and minerals, um, also some of protein and healthy fats. It's all going to help keep our blood sugar and our insulin levels stable as well because it releases that energy gradually. The third part of this is the eat more is the um, healthy fats. So again, we talked about fats earlier. They're important to help those fat-soluble vitamins from absorbing properly in our body. Um, and these are going to include avocados, all the types of nuts, so almonds and cashews. Um, egg yolks are fatty. Seeds, the chia, flax, seed, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, peanuts and peanut butters and other natural nut butters. Pesto, when it's made with the extra virgin olive oil, is great. Olive 
is a great one. Um, fresh unprocessed coconut, which we have a lot down here. Um, eight cheeses and those healthy oils. So avocado oil and virgin olive oil. Um, walnut cream, that's a great one as well. So we want to choose these healthier fats. Um, research has shown that it can help with food loss. It supports healthy brain function. It can protect our body against disease. So the healthier ones we want to choose most often are going to be called monounsaturated, polyunsaturated. The so monounsaturated includes those olive oils, um, avocado oil, nuts, and seeds. And then polyunsaturated includes something called omega-3 fatty acids, which a lot of people hear about, um, which is the fatty fish. So salmon, anchovies, and sardines are the highest in those. Flax seeds, chia seeds, and actually walnuts are a good source of omega-3s. So again, trying to avoid eating fat if you can. Those are going to be found in commercially baked goods, packaged food items, partially hydrogenated oil on the ingredient list. Um, they're all going to contain the most And the saturated fat, just trying to eat that in moderation. Um, and just trying to have a better balance of getting enough of the volume of the unsaturated fat to the saturated fat. Omega-3 fatty acids that we just talked about. So that's going to include those DHA and EPA, which I'm sure you've seen somewhere before. Um, the best sources are going to be flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, walnuts, fish, fish oils, and also algae. <clears throat> so these oils are, or these fats are really important because it helps prevent when you're young, and it helps prevent or slow neurodegenerative disorders when you're old. It can also help increase insulin sensitivity. Um, it's good for your heart and also your immune system. <clears throat> omega-3 pretty much means anti-inflammatory. Okay? The opposite omega-6 is pro-inflammatory. Uh, omega-6 is found in a lot of commercial oils, vegetable oils, soybean oils, you know, the kind of uh, packaged products. This product is going to have more of that omega-6 in it. So we really, really need a more of those omega-3s, and unfortunately, the American diet is usually geared more towards those omega-6s. So, how do we look at this omega-3, omega-6 ratio? So, we can eat fewer industrially refined foods and fats, so really trying to stay away from those different oils that are found in a lot of those foods. We want to eat more of a varied plant and animal foods. Especially fatty fish, wild caught if possible, is going to have higher in omega 3s. Um, grass fed beef is going to have some. And they also make eggs that are rich with omega 3s. So that's a good thing to look for when you purchase eggs. And depending on your diet, if you're, you know, if you're not eating enough of those foods, you can also take an omega 3 supplement, uh, which is either from a fish or algae. So it is something you want to consider if you're, if you're not eating those foods on a regular basis. And last but not least, in our eat more um, section is our vegetables. So again, you kind of made about to make about half your plate those good vegetables as often as you can. And just really try to eat the rainbow. Um, eat these red vegetables, beets, red cabbage, tomato, red leaf, lettuce, onions, peppers, the yellow orange one, pumpkin, orange yellow peppers, carrots, butter and acorn squash, summer squash, yellow beets. Purple eggplant, purple carrots, cabbage, greens, all the great greens you get all the time. White cauliflower, shallots, onions, mushrooms, garlic. All really, really good for us. So we should be eating most of the time a lot of good veggies in our diet. And you have to eat some. So this is kind of like the middle um, foods you want to eat. Not too often, but you do want to include these as well. Um, usually to eat some group, I recommend eating about... Um, two to three times a week. So trying to include these as well. So again, we're not depriving ourselves too much of some of these other foods. So when it comes to usually Canadian bacon, turkey bacon, beef jerky, chicken sausages, so things that are a little bit more processed when it comes to meats, also the deli meats, protein powders. So again, these aren't the best, but they're not terrible. So we just want to make sure we're not eating these all the time, but eating them again two to three times a week is perfectly fine. Again, those carbs, so the, the white grains, couscous, granola, you know, instant or flavored oatmeals, 
milk, flavored yogurts, pancakes, waffles, whole grain crackers, granola bars, canned or dried fruits, and white breads, bagels, wraps, flaky. And then fats, coconut oil, dark chocolate, cream, cheese that's not aged, flavored nut butter, trail mixes, butter, and mayonnaise. So again, these are, you know, some foods that a lot of people really enjoy. So we don't want to cut them out completely. But we just do want to just be mindful of that when we are eating them and just kind of eat them, you know, two, three, four times a week. And then again, eating more from that eat uh, more group, okay? And then last but not least, they eat less. So really try and eat these maybe one to two times a week. Um, that's going to be for proteins, fried meats, chicken fingers and nuggets, the higher fat ground beef, so those like 85, 80% fat ground beef. Those higher fat sausages, processed deli meats, pepperoni sticks, carbs, cereal bars, fruit juices, flavored milk like chocolate, strawberry milk, um, pure sugar, honey, canned fruit with added sugar, dried fruit with added sugar, soda, crackles, pretzels, chips, fries, candy pears, donuts, cookies, pastries, all those great foods as well. Really trying to limit as much as you can, but again, not cutting out completely. Um, when it comes to the fat, so processed cheese, um, all those vegetable oils we talked about, to limit um, dressings with those oils and shortening. And then also alcohol, really trying to limit alcohol as much as you can too. Okay. <clears throat> we want to uh, processed carbs. So the last one we talked about, like the donuts, cookies, that kind of thing. Um, unfortunately, these foods have been stripped of all the good nutrition that can be in these foods. So it's you know, the fiber has been taken out, taken out. They've really um, put just pretty much pure sugar and pure white flour in these foods. So eating these foods can cause a dramatic spike in blood sugar, followed by a rapid crash, which can, lead, which can lead you feeling hungry and prone to overeating. Um, a lot of them, like I said, they've been stripped of the nutrients. Um, they a lot of times include those trans fats we're trying to stay away from. Um, and again, these simple carbs can hide in a lot of foods. So another reason to look at that nutrition label, um, something can seem really healthy from the outside and has really good marketing, but you turn it over on the nutrition label, it shows that it's just pretty much full of sugar. So I would definitely highly recommend, like I said, being familiar with the nutrition label and start checking out that if you can. Um, so obviously, you know, some people have a hard time cutting these out or limiting them. So, you know, start slow. Start somewhere where you can start really decreasing these in your diet and start filling it in with more of those eat more foods. <clears throat> One thing I do highly recommend if you are drinking like soda, juice, really those sugar sweetened beverages, I would really start there because um, it's, it's so easy to drink a lot of that and that can add up really quickly when it comes to sugar and calories. So if we can slowly reduce that, that can really, really be helpful. Okay, last but not least, the National Nutrition Month wants you to focus on working with a professional. So you guys are all here to this class, so that's a really great first step in learning some more um, information, especially from a dietitian who's had the training in nutrition and, and knows these things. Um, if you, you're not able to come to these classes or you want some more help, um, talk to your doctor about referring you to a dietitian that's local in your area. Um, there's so many great online dietetic services as well. So if you're not able to go somewhere, you can always do a virtual consult with a dietitian. Um, and also, always make sure you're getting advice from a licensed and trained professional. We have a lot of, again, people on social media, on the internet that are um, claiming to be, you know, nutrition experts. And they really aren't. They might be trying to tell you something. So. If they're trying to sell you something, it usually means um, they're probably not a professional. I mean, some, sometimes there are professionals that do sell things, but just be mindful and, you know, make sure you know, are they a dietitian? Are they licensed? You know, who are these people that you're trusting? Um, so I would just make sure you know where you're getting your advice from. Okay, so we don't have anyone in person right now, but we usually talk about goals. Um, it's a great thing to to have, especially when it comes to nutrition and healthy eating and exercise, is to start making goals for yourself. Um, this can be a small goal, this can be a big goal, but just, you know, usually making some sort of like weekly or monthly goals so you can continue checking it with yourself and updating these goals as you as you need to. All right. <clears throat> 
So actually, I'm going to do the video. I'm going to show you guys a meal prep video that I found that was really, really nice and simple, just with a simple Google search. You see that video, what's that? Yes. Oh, we're here new on Lisa. And today we are talking to meal prep. And I'm a big fan of meal prep because when it comes to healthy eating, there's one strategy that works in the end, and that's planning ahead. You probably do meal prep a little bit different than most because instead of prepping the same meal for five days of the week, I prep individual ingredients. This still saves me heaps of time in the kitchen, but gives me far more variety in my meals throughout the week. And I don't know about you, but I get a little bored eating the same thing for five days in a row. Today I'm going to show you nine ingredients that you can meal prep in under two hours on a Sunday. With plenty of ingredients prepped in your fridge, all it takes is a little creativity to combine them with fresh produce or items that you have in your pantry for healthy meals take less than five minutes to make. And if you do meal prep this way, you'll have greater nutrient variety. Your tummy will be happy and you'll still save time in the kitchen. And I think that's a winning combination. So let's dive in and I'll show you what I've been prepped this week. That face that is usually by our phone has finally made it yeah. To make meal prep as efficient as possible, I always recommend a little planning before you get started. This includes getting all of your ingredients out and ready and jotting down a few notes, like what you want to make, any appliances you'll need, and how long it will take to cook. Once you've written your notes, you'll be able to see which items take the longest or which you can work simultaneously. Roasted vegetables are one of my favorite meal prep ingredients because it's so easy to toss a bunch of veggies onto a baking tray and cook them. Today I'm roasting broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and red onion with a little bit of fresh garlic, but it's easy to change up the veggies based on what's in season. My tip when it comes to roasting vegetables is to choose those that take about the same amount of time to cook. Broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and mushrooms all take about 25 minutes in a 425 degree Fahrenheit oven. And carrots, beets, potatoes, and butternut squash all take about 45 minutes. So you want to keep those vegetables on different trays. Once everything is sliced into evenly sized pieces, drizzle with a little olive oil or avocado oil and season with salt and pepper and give it a good toss. You could do this in full or directly on the baking tray. Just make sure that once the veggies are on the tray, they're in a flat, single layer with no overlap, and then set them aside. Next, we're going to make some sweet potato toast. And while sweet potato toast got a bunch of buzz a few years ago, I still haven't stopped making it. Not only is it a great gluten-free toast alternative, but it's a great way to sneak more veggies into your diet, which I'm always a fan of. To make the toast slices, you can use either a mandolin or a chef's knife. A mandolin will keep the slices even at about a quarter of an inch, while if you use the chef's knife, you can make them a little bit thicker. It's just for Once you've got all your sweet potato slices, add them to a parchment lined baking tray. You can cook these dry or with a little bit of olive oil or avocado oil, and I personally like them with a little bit of oil, so that's what I'm doing today. And once you've got both sides coated, just set this tray aside as well. I always have some type of protein every week, and this week I'm making my baked chicken with herbs. I'd say this is one of my go-tos when it comes to an easy chicken recipe, and I make it a few times a month. Now, I'm just making two chicken breasts because I'm one person, but you can of course double or triple this for a family. So you'll coat both sides of the chicken with avocado oil and season with salt and pepper. Sprinkle on your favorite herbs and spices, and I'm using a mix of basil, parsley, thyme, rosemary, and garlic powder. But feel free to get creative. If 
you need a little spice inspiration, make sure to watch the Spice Drawer Organization video where you can see all of my spices. While those items are cooking, I'll begin the stovetop ingredients, and that includes the white rice and hard-boiled eggs, or in my case, slightly soft-boiled eggs. Your safety is our priority. That's why we go the extra mile to seal our vehicles. In terms of a starch or grain, I'm making white rice today because that always does better with my digestion. But you could also make brown rice, lentils, or really any other pulses or grains. And the great thing is that you can switch it up every single week. At the same time my rice is cooking, I'll heat up another pot of water to boil some eggs. But before I do that, I'll check on the items in the oven and keep my sweet potato toast afloat. The chicken should be done by now, and I'll use an instant refill of water to double check. If it is, I'll remove it and let it rest and add the tray of broccoli and Brussels sprouts. So the way I cook egg is to boil the water first, then place the eggs in, and set a timer immediately when they've entered the water. I find this method always produces the most consistently perfect eggs, rather than bringing a cold water to the boil with the eggs already in the water. My favorite eggs are six and a half minute eggs or what you like jam eggs. But if you like harder or softer, feel free to adjust the time. The key with meal prepping eggs though, is to have a bowl of ice water nearby so that once you remove the eggs from the pot, you can submerge them in the ice water to instantly stop them from cooking. At this point, my rice is just about done, so I'll turn off the heat, fluff it up, and let it cool down a bit. When the eggs are done, transfer them to the ice water bath and let them cool as well. For the chicken, you can leave it whole or cut it up into slices or cubes. Since I have an idea of what meals I want to make this week, I'll slice it up right now, again, saving me time later in the week. Then, place the chicken into a glass lock storage container, and these are my favorite meal prep containers, as they're glass and spill proof. Then, I'll transfer the white rice to a container as well. You can peel the eggs now or leave them for later. I recommend peeling them now, so all you have to do is grab one for a quick snack or slice it up into a recipe. And I'm storing these in a round glass slot container. By the time all that's done, our roasted veggies and sweet potato are also done, so transfer those items to storage containers as well. You do want to let the sweet potato fully cool before transferring to the container, as it will have quite a bit of moisture and you don't want it to get too soft. I add a paper towel to absorb any excess moisture, but the simple fact of the matter is that these toasts will be soft when you reheat them, and I'm okay with that. I should also note that my paper towels are unbleached and don't contain So yeah, that was a really great video. There's plenty of them out there as well. Um, you can really look up some other meal prep videos. They really go through, you know, how to make meal prep easier and how to store things, how to cook things, etc. So she's pretty much set for a few days, which is really nice. Great. Elizabeth, do you have any questions or comments? <laughs> Well, I will say that I have had experience with the new nutrition label on the protein bar that I eat. And the reason why I knew that it is the new one is because when you showed me the picture of how big the calorie number is, whenever I ate my bar yesterday, I looked at it and was like, oh, that's nice. But I didn't realize that was the new label. And so, um, so and also, I always just check out the, you know, fat, the protein, the fiber content online. And I do remember seeing the iron and the potassium on there now. So that made me feel good that it's actually made its way into my kitchen. So yep. that's cool. And then also I just made a, a few um, notes and if the listeners out there, um, maybe, you know, sometimes hearing it again might help. But for me, like I, I do a lot of your tips already. 
which is I feel good about that. Like there's some things that I want to improve on with um, increasing the different herbs and spices in my cabinet. So it's kind of like I, how I want to look at it is how many pairs of shoes or how many pairs of earrings I have. I want to make my spice cabinet look fun too. So it's like your shoe cabinet and your jewelry cabinet look a certain way. I want to spice up my kitchen that way too. So I'm going to expand on those spices and, and get different colors in there, different flavors. And then I, I definitely want to start putting lemon juice on my salad and squeezing some of that on there. I just think that that would add a little bit more flair. And then um, with the Greek yogurt, I think because I'll just need, I think and probably other people can say this too, they may need a little flavor in there. Um, for me, I feel like berries are going to be the best option for me to add to increase my fruits for that. But then I also made a little note um, to potentially add some walnuts because that, I don't have a lot of walnuts in my diet. So I think that would be fun to add to that as well. And then um, I started doing, um, remember when we talked about the um, the breakfast, you know, the casserole, I call it casserole, but the breakfast um, recipe that you gave. Like I yep. started mixing half whole, like eggs, like normal eggs, and then half of the um egg substitute is just the egg whites and I at first I tried to you know I wondered if my husband was going to notice the difference he didn't notice one and neither did I and now it's you know it's no big deal so I like that so that trick has worked and eventually like I say I think we'll just move all the way to just the egg whites the egg substitutes and then um but in the meantime I'm going to get those omega-3 rich eggs that you talked about and, um, and use those instead of the just regular eggs that I had been getting. And then um, I'm going to add some peppers this week to my chicken tacos. So I'm excited about that. So just seeing like the different stuff that the tips you put on there. So hopefully the listeners and the um, when people go back and watch this on YouTube, they can look at those different colors and really, you know, make their plate look flattering and make it more appealing. And I think... Food is just something that not only you're nourishing your, yourself, but you're nourishing um, just your want. We all have to eat. So it's like, you know, make it fun. Make it make it be a, a thing that you enjoy rather than something that you're downing yourself the whole time because you think you shouldn't be eating something. So I think if you kind of change your mindset, it might make you want to eat a little bit better. So I'm excited. Well, those sound like all great things. That's, that's awesome. That's great to hear all that. Very cool. What else I was really surprised at is that, um, you know, I think people have always been under the impression that we should get about 60 grams of protein a day, like as a normal, or 50 to 60. When you said 100, I was like, whoo, okay, I'm going to have to bump up my protein use. <laughs> so I'm going to work on that as well. Yeah, that, that's a bit, that one of the biggest things I see when I work with clients individually is, is not enough protein in their diet. Like, and it, it is, and it really does help when we start increasing that. Um, and, if, and if you are, is, if that is one of your goals to start increasing your protein, I do recommend doing it slowly. So don't go from 50 grams all the way up to 100 in one day. Um, you do want to start increasing that slowly. Um, make sure you're getting fluids, um, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it is really, really important because people don't realize how important protein is. It's, it's not just for our muscles. It's for all of our tissues in our body. And it, it needs to be com continually eaten so because our body is continually breaking down tissue and everything. So... Yeah, that's a big one that I see a lot. So really increasing that can really help with a lot of things. Weight loss as well. So, when, And when you mentioned that it actually helps it is trying to decrease the blood pressure. And I, I was unaware of that. And I was like, wow, that's good for all heart healthy people that were listening last month as well. Yeah. So that's very good. And I know we have um, a person on the line. I don't know if they have any questions. So if they have any questions, I'll let them speak up. Yeah, it's definitely, mm -hmm. it's definitely a little bit more crackly today and definitely some other noises coming out, so I don't know. I know. I know that we did have some trouble down here yesterday um, just in, with our Comcast. I don't know if the wind is an issue or I know that I've been told that whenever the wind is pretty uh, active here in the trees that it tends to decrease the Wi-Fi capabilities, so that potentially may be some issues 
uh, going off that. So we have a new IT team coming on this week, so I'm going to um, speak with them about coming down and just doing a system check on our stuff just to make sure nothing on our part. So hopefully next month we'll have, we won't have so much crackles. Um, I wanted to also point out to, to the listeners just some things that since I've been to these classes each month, but I've increased my steps per day and just, you know, working on exercise and just being weary of, um, that number one thing when you said don't go to the store hungry, it's almost like sometimes you have to do it out of convenience because you're right by the store, you got to go, but it really is true. I will go in there and I, it's just, I don't know if it's, it's like subconsciously, you just start buying more because it's like you look at certain things and you're like, well, I might need that, I might need that. And then you get to the checkout and you're like, whoo, I didn't realize I bought all that. And then you get home and you're starving and then you feel like you want to eat it all because you're excited about what you bought. So, <laughs> so definitely don't go to the store hungry for sure. Yeah, keep any of those like, portable snacks that I mentioned before, like somewhere you can grab and get something really quick, you know, or maybe even have something in your car. Because if that does happen and your hung and that hunger hits, maybe you know, eating that can really be helpful, especially before you hit the store. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember someone telling me one time that um, when you're trying to lose weight, sometimes it will. Um, let me make sure this here. Hold on. <laughs> the air popped on, so I don't want it to be crackly because of that. It should go off in just a second. But I had a, a person tell me one time that um, sometimes your body confuses hunger with dehydration. So if, if you haven't drink, you know, if you haven't had a lot to drink that day, and you think you're hungry, if you just actually go hydrate some, obviously that takes that volume in your stomach, takes up space. And that'll kind of relieve your moments of thinking that you're hungry. Is that somewhat true or is that? Yeah, thirst and hunger can be pretty much interchangeable sometimes for some people. It's hard for them to tell the difference. Um, so especially if your goal is weight loss, trying to drink something first to see if maybe it is just thirst um, can definitely help. Um, but also, you know, when did you last eat? You know, what, what were you eating? Also evaluating what you ate, you know, an hour ago or two hours ago, did it not have enough protein in it? Did not have enough fiber or fruits and vegetables? Did not have those. So it could be a, you know, it, it could show you why you are hungry at that time and what you could do next time to try to prevent that, that, you know, hunger from eating too. Um, but yes, it, the, the thirst can definitely be um, something that could be actually feeling and it might not be that hunger. So that could be a good, good thing to do as well is to just drink something to see if that helps. Well, I'm excited with these new tips. I'm going to put to use this next month. And then um, we are going to see you on April the 17th. And we're going to talk about diabetes. So I'm excited about that as well. Just I don't, I'm not diabetic, but I do have people in my family that are diabetic. And I know that I can um, take some tips for them and, and share with them. So I feel like not only people that watch this, they can you know share the wealth of this knowledge with their coworkers, their friends, family. And, you know, hopefully it just kind of spreads around um, a little bit more of new, healthy nutrition tips. Oh, sure, for sure. Well, I thank you very much. And I know that um, everyone that's going to watch this is going to get some other healthy tips. So I know it's going to benefit others. And we will see you on April 17th. All right. Sounds good. All right. Have thanks a nice so much. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye.